mtazamaji karibu sasa viongozi wa kidini wametoa wito kwa wakenya kuwa wangalifu zaidi na kuchunguza kwa undani makundi ya kidini wanaojihusisha nayo wito huo unajiri kufuatia ufichuzi wa punde zaidi wa dhehebu moja la kidini eneo la Shakahola kaunti ya Kilifi ambapo zaidi ya maiti 40 kufikia jana zimefukuliwa na bado zinaendelea kufukuliwa kufikia sasa kama na vutuarifu Loro Otieno baadhi ya wadau pia wametoa hisia kali kwa serikali kukaza kamba zaidi katika usajili wa makundi ya kidini. Hukuma swali zaidi ya kiibuka kuhusu dhehebu potofu la Good News International. Viongozi wa kidini sasa wamepasua mbarika kuhusu swala hilo. Hukumu wakiwa rai wa Kenya kupiga msasa makundi ya kidini wanayofuata. Askofu mkuu wa kanisa la Katoliki Jimbo la Nyeri Anthony Moheria akitoa wito kwa serikali kupiga darubini makanisa na makundi ya kidini yaliyoko nchini. Each religious uh, new dini that comes should have statutes, should have a clear uh, mandate of what they are teaching, what uh, and, and the leaders should have should be somehow cleared that not everyone anyone should have the possibility of just registering a religion. Let us not hide under this cover of uh, freedom of expression or freedom of religion and worship that is provided for in our constitution, we must hold pastors accountable. Kulingana na sheria za Kenya, baadhi ya mahitaji ya kusajili kundi la kidini ni pamoja na katiba ya kundi hilo inayoonyesha uwazi mafunzo yatakayofanywa wakati wa ushirika, miradi itakayotekelezwa na kundi hilo pamoja na idhibati ya kuwa na ushirikiano na kundi kubwa zaidi la kidini. Aidha, yeyote anayepania kuwa kiongozi wa kanisa anatakiwa kuwa na aidha shahada au cheti cha diploma ya theolojia kadi ya utambulisho pamoja moja na cheti kutoka mamlaka ya ukusanyaji ushuru KRA hata hivyo baadhi ya wadau wanaitaka serikali kubuni sheria zaidi ya usajili wa makundi ya kidini if you apply the same rules as you would apply to a normal society then you are going to miss a lot in terms of uh, you, uh, your capability or your ability to test the doctrines of these churches that we are seeing Laura Otieno Runinga ya Citizen Hai mtazamaji tunaanza mada yetu na ni kuarifu sasa hivi tu taarifa tuzopata kutoka kwa msalaba mwekundu ni kwamba kufikia sasa wameweza kuchunguza watu waliopotea katika eneo hilo la Shakahola na idadi yao inafika wawili. Watu ambao hawajulikani waliko hatuwezi kujua kama wote wameangamia lakini bila shaka ni taarifa tutakuwa tunazitegea kutoka kwake Francis Mtalaki aliyeko Malindi. Moja kwa moja nianze na wewe Kasisi Hamisi Kirenga hisia zako kabla hata tujaanza mazungumzo kuhusiana na kisa hiki. Asante sana Nimrod kwa kunialika hapa. Citizen, nimefurahia sana kwa sababu jambo hili ni la kuvunja moyo. Kwa sababu sisi watu kama wa kanisa si jambo ambalo tunaamini ya kwamba linafaa litokee karne hii. Kwa hivyo nataka kutoa risala zangu za rambe rambe kwa familia wote ambao walipoteza watoto wao kwa sababu tumeona watoto pia ni wengi waliopoteza ndugu zao kwa sababu ni kitu ambacho kinatuvunja moyo sana. Pia kama kanisani tunaomba kwamba Mungu awafariji hao wote ambao wameangamia kwa ili janga. Naam. Eh, wakili Eric mm. Komole pia nawe hisia zako moja kwa moja kama binada. Eh, pole sana kwa familia eh, na watu wa Malindi. Eh, inashangaza kwamba kitu kama hiki kinafanyika hapa Kenya na eh, serikali ni kama eh, haikuwa inajua chochote. Eh, eh, kuna uhuru wa kuabudu atiko 32 ya katiba. Lakini hiyo uhuru should not be abused. Uh, na pengine uh, tunafaa kuanza kuongea sasa uh, uh, vile tutafanya regulation ya churches uh, sana sana uh, churches that uh, seem to be controlled by one person no. unajua churches uh, peer ni institutions no. uh, na institutions like any other should be regulated no. uh, lakini pole sana and i hope uh, serikali itafanya Uh, kila uh, uh, wanaweza kuhakikisha kwamba uh, ke, ke wale wamepotea wamepatikana uh, na huyu pasta huyu kasisi kama anaitwa hivyo uh, pia lazima ashtakiwe na tujue ukweli ni nini uh, asante tarejea kwako kwa masuala mengi tu ya kisheria daktari Arinji asante sana Nimrod uh, kwanza ningependa kuwapa pole ambao wameathiri uh, familia ambazo zimeathirika ni jambo la kutatiza you know um, kuona mtu anaweza fika kiwango hichi kupotoza watu you know it's just 
mind control uh, jambo la muhimu ni tunafaa kujielewa you know, bottom line ukijifahamu vizuri itakuwa ni vigumu mtu kukupotosha so anatumia hisia za kimaisha ukiangalia bila mambo yanaendelea kuna majanga mengi yanaendelea so hapo ndipo usipokuwa makini na ambayo whatever is happening around you utapata unapotea no. bila ku kuelewa na asante sana daktari na umegusia neno zuri ambalo nataka nimuulize naye dada yetu Rosalina umezungumzia ufahamu dada yetu Rosalina uh, ni mmoja kati ya wale ambao walikuwa na sura waingie katika dhebu lile eh, ama sijui kama uliingia lakini nataka tupate hisia na historia yako eh, kwanza ulipata kujua lini kuhusiana na kanisa lile na pili jamaa zako ambao bado wakili kule je mna masiliano nayo tuanzie kwa katika historia kuweza kufahamu dhebu hili la good news international Asante, majina naitwa Roslyn Nasena. Mimi ni mkazi wa Mukuru kwa Ruben na mimi ni community paralegal. And uh, kwanza hisia ni kwamba my heart goes for the children. Children were forced to engage in something they were not aware of. My heart goes for them. It's very unfortunate. Now, kuhusu Dehebu la Pastor Mackenzie niliweza kulijua back in 2017 2017 na nilijua sikuwa nimejua huyu pastor anaitwa Mackenzie but i just had the wife of my brother akisema my brother ameacha pombe kwa sababu alikuwa na mbua kila wakati pombe akipata pesa kidogo amepotelea kwa pombe so her prayer and any family's prayer would be si uache pombe ama upunguze so aliposema my brother ameacha pombe sababu ameingia kwa kanisa we were like that's good sasa muone vile mtajipanga kimaisha muendelee kulea watoto then pole pole akakuja akasema uh, my brother akafika mahali 2019 akasema watoto hawezi enda shule there is a child alikuwa amezaa mtoto namba 3 Kwa, kwamba the wife alikuwa mjamzito na hakuwa ienda clinic kwa sababu dhehebu ilikata uh, ah kidogo hapo unaposema kwamba alibadili mienendo na kuacha pombe alikuwa ashaelekea malindi ama alikuwa alikuwa already ako pande ya Mombasa lakini Mahali alikuwa anaishi ndio siwezi shikanisha vizuri but hakuwa ameenda Malindi. Malindi ni mahali walikuja tu kuenda maybe maybe in 2019 kuelekea 2020. Sasa huyu mtoto wa pili alipokosa kupelekwa mama yake alipokosa kupelekwa clinic I had to intervene nauliza kwa nini uwezi enda clinic. Nikajaribu kuelezea manufaa ya kwenda clinic na nika, na anajua. Yaani funny enough these are things they know wame tumegrow nazo my brother ananifata kwa mgongo tumegrow tukienda hospitali tulikuwa tunaenda Riana Ginga kule Vihiga constituency my mom would take us to hospital how comes you just wake up one day hata kama kanisa imekutoa kwa vitu moja mbili tatu it is you who decided who utaenda kwa hizo na uliona hasara zake lakini tena nje ya yenye umechukua si mzuri but tungekosana na my brother kabisa he became a different person i did not know my brother i did not recognize him slowly by slowly akaanza ku recruit now my sister my sister tena akaanza kuhubiri yani mnaweza kama mahali anachukua simu anasema nyamazeni nyamazeni kwanza nataka nihubiri unapata kwamba anahubiri 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 but you look at it and you are like so long as he doesn't touch me una weka kando these are grown ups na katika mahubiri yalikuwa ni mafundisho ambayo nyinyi mmezoea ama mlikuwa mnaona ni mafundisho ni mafundisho yalikuwa yanashangaza cause every time anasema the end of the world is here Yesu amefika huenda tusivuke hata mwaka ujao every other time there was that cap period cap kwenye tutavuka So tulikuwa na shida the family had a problem. Watoto wa my sister ikafika mahali hata yeye amefika mahali anataka kukataa wasiende shule. Kwanza 2020 wakati the president alitangaza covid ime step in Kenya. That's when they recruited many people. By now stamping 
by telling every other person, listen, have you seen? Simbaona shule zimefungwa. Na ndio mwisho wa dunia. Sasa mwisho sasa huu ndio mwanzo. Na hiyo ndio saini kubwa kwamba mwisho wa dunia umefika. Let me tell you families have had issues with our members. Unajaribu kuangalisha mtu unamrudisha kwa njia ile inafaa. Unaona madhara yale yanakuja. There is the third child mwenye hakuwa hii bado hata yeye hakupelekwa clinic. Huyo mtoto alikuwa anashinda. Unaangalia unaona this could be whooping cough. And because hajawahi pata all immunizations then where do we start? At some point I wanted to go to Malindi. But nikakuja nikasikia kule ukikanyaga if you don't die utatoka huko ukiwa mlemavu na hakuna mahali utawapeleka. Huyo pastor ameshika ground ya security kama kila kitu ni chake. So tukaogopa tukawacha but it has not been an easy journey. Paka kufikia sasa ambapo tumeanza kuona hivi visa nafikiri wiki majuma mawili yaliyopita. Je, mlikuwa mara ya mwisho kuwasiliana nao ilikuwa lini na je unaweza kutupa hakikisho kwamba wakili hai ama kuna baadhi yao ambao mmepata habari wameaga dunia? So as we speak me I had to see my brother on the screen. And I'm like oh so he has been arrested. And I took the snapshots and sent to my family. And I told them, listen, now here is my brother. He has been arrested. He is one of the members. I don't know, has he been arrested as maybe an accomplice? Or has, be, has he been arrested as a person who was trying to commit suicide? So I, the question was, where is his wife? We did not know. Then I also came to see the wife when you're running. being arrested. And I also send, just with luck, I just find myself seeing, here is the wife. And I try to ask even the relatives from the other side of the wife, is this her? And they said, yes, she's the one. And so I said, now, where are the children? As we speak right now, the family now has sent me to go to Malindi mm -hmm. to go find out where are his five children. No. We do not know where the five children no. are. Kwa kifupi tu, we uliepuka vipi tegu wa kuji katika dini hile? Ayi ni ngumu singeweza, because zile vitu nilikuwa... Kuna wakati uliwai kuwasiliana pengine moja kwa moja na kasisi mwenye? Aa, mawasiliano ilikuwa kati ya ndugu yangu na dada yangu. Paka unapata... Unajaribu kukushawishi. Eee, unapata wanajaribu kuleta watu kwa nyumba, wanihubirie, nijaribu kuingia. But me, I was always against because our ni watoto wamekuja nyuma yangu. How do they honestly? Ilikuwa ni ngumu. Na, zuya hapo, ntarudi kwako. Kasisi Hamisi, kuna maali katika maandiki wa Biblia. Imesemekana kwamba muubiri kasisi kiongozi wa kidini. Anaweza kumshawishi mtu. Aileke katika mwenendo wa kuzuru wa taafia yake. Kuna maali maandiki wa kama ya? Nikweli, kwa sababu kiangalia kitabu cha mitume. Katika mlango wa ishirini mstari wa 29 Paulo aliwakanya wale walikuwa kule kanisani akawaambia mimi natoka naenda zangu lakini najua kuna umbo wa mwitu watakuja ambao wamevaa ngozi ya kondoo na iwapo watakuja na mafundisho tofauti wanaweza wageuza nyinyi na wadae na wakawafanya nyinyi kuwa kwa dhehebu ambalo ni tofauti na lile ambalo naubiri kwa hivyo tunaona ili jambo ni mrodi si jambo mpya ati limetokea leo ni jambo hata Paulo mwenyewe katika Biblia alikuwa amewakanya lile kanisa la kwanza kabisa akawaambia kwamba kuna uwezekano kwamba kuna mtu mwingine ambaye atakuja na injili tofauti ambayo si ile ambayo tumehubiri na waweze kuwasawishi hata wale ambao ni watu ambao wamekaa kanisani yeah. na Paulo akasema kwa miaka mitatu nimekaa na nyinyi nikiwafundisha ili msiweze kupotea kwa sasa hivi kwa hivyo kwa Biblia tayari ishatukanya na ishatuambia kwamba mambo kama haya yanaweza tokea tendo kama hili sidhani limeamka ameamka jana akaambia watu waacheni kula chakula mm -hmm. ni kitu kimetokea hatua kwa hatua yes. nipe mtazamo wako kama kasisi mm -hmm. inafikia kiwango gani mpaka kasisi anaona binadamu wenzake si binadamu ambao wanastahili kuwa hai ila wote wanastahili kuangamia inafikia kiwango gani wajua ni mrodo acha nikuelezee na wasikizaji ambao wanasikia manyumbani sisi binadamu wote kuna shimo ndani yetu ambalo linamtafuta Mungu. Na tunaweza kuwa na mali, tunaweza kuwa na masomo, tunaweza kuwa na kila kitu katika hii dunia, lakini kuna shimo ambalo liko wazi ambalo linamtafuta Mungu. Ndipo unakuta kwamba katika hizi ibada potovu 
unakuta watu wamesoma utakuta kama ule msichana ambaye alikuwa ya hostess nimeshangaa sana alikuwa malindi ni mtu ambaye amesoma utakuta madaktari walikuwa pale utakuta watu ambao pia wako serikalini wako kule ndani kwa sababu kwa sisi wote kama binadamu tuko na lile shimo ambalo halezi jazwa na masomo halezi jazwa na mali na jazwa tu na Mungu peke yake kwa hivyo itafikia mahali ambapo hilo shimo ambapo unamtafuta Mungu huyu kiongozi kwa sababu ana maneno matamu. Ukimsikia Mackenzie akihubiri si mara ya kwanza. Mimi nishamsikia 2017 wakati alikuwa ameadaa vijana hata wasiende shule na akashikwa na serikali. Ako na ulimi mtamu sana. Anaweza kuambia kitu chochote na ukakifuata. Hata wewe ambao umesoma ukamsikiza kwa sababu lile shimo lako la mtafuta Mungu litamsikia yeye na likikupata kama hauna mafunzo. Kwa sababu watu wengi kama dada yangu huyu labda akona mafunzo mazuri ndio maana alijua kwamba ah hawa waongee ukweli. Lakini si watu wengi wanasoma Biblia. Si watu wengi wanachukua kitabu siku hizi cha Biblia na wanasoma usubuhi. Na ndiposa unakuta kwamba mtu kama Mackenzie akianza kusema Mungu amesema hivi bila hata kufikiria mnafata. Na ndiposa kama kanisa sisi tunaombia washirika wetu someni Biblia kwa sababu ukisoma Biblia itakuweka huru hautaweza kufata kiongozi. Lakini hawa viongozi Nimrod wako na maneno matamu sana. Na ni wengi tutazungumzia tutazungumzia hao wengine. Lakini daktari uh, hii ni imani potovu. Lakini inafikaje kiwango ambacho mtu kama alivyosema uh, uh, kasisi na kiongozi vijana hamisi ni kwamba imani potovu daktari wakili mm. mtu aliyesoma mwalimu anakuja kubadilishwa mawazo tofauti na alivyosomea skuli katika taaluma tofauti tueleze kama daktari mtaalamu wa masuala ya kiakili inakuwaje namna hiyo um, ukiangalia kawaida kuna mambo matatu uh, kama binadamu we are social beings yani tumezoea kuwa na uhusiano na watu jambo lingine ni Binadamu anapenda comfort, hatupendi kuteseka. Jambo la tatu utapata um, ukiangalia kama binadamu tunapenda kudhaminiwa. You want to be appreciated. So utapata kama kuna wakati one of those three you're missing in something. Alafu upate kuna mtu atakuja alafu atakuja kutosheleza kabisa. Utapata akisema hii vile tu uh, Hamisi amesema atatumia maneno matamu kukuonesha okay fine. We appreciate you, we recognize you who you are and you'll start identifying with this person. So pole pole utaenda utaanza kumuona kama mtu mwenye ana authority. So anything akisema utafuata. In as much as you have uh, the information and as much as you're knowledgeable, they just distort what you know and you end up falling right into the space where he wants you to be. Alafu ukiangalia sana sana ukiangalia vile watu wana jipata kwenye hizi cults ataanza na kukuambia ku focus on what is happening around you vile um, dadangu alisema kwamba vile covid 19 ilikuja the world came to a standstill and that was the right platform for for such um, organizations to come up so anaanza kukuambia haya angalia kuna magonjwa hayaeleweki angalia kuna vita angalia kuna floods angalia kuna drought happening cancers have gone on the rise so just pointing this uh, very bleak future which tells you clearly the end of the world is coming but i'm here to give you a solution sawe mwenye ukiangalia hivyo kiona if all you're focusing is all the negative things happening around wewe mwenye ukiangalia kimaisha labda sasa hizo kuna changamoto unapitia lakini anakuambia don't worry kuna suluhisho you don't have to go through all this we can find a way out You will listen to him. Daktari najua kuna wagonjwa umewahi kuzungumza nao. Mm -hmm. Ukampa hamasisho, ukampa wasia kufanya jambo fulani, akamwambia hapana daktari hapa sio ni sawa. Kwa huu mhubiri naona tofauti sana na mwingiliano wako wa kimawazo kwa binadamu. Kwa sababu anakuambia usile na usini. Na mtu unakubali kufanya hivyo. Naona fahamu kwamba fika kwamba usipokula, usipokunywa, mm -hmm. taga dunia. Kiwango gani amebadilisha mawazo, bongo za watu? Uh, kuna vile uh, Rose alisema kianza, alisema inaanza na process jambo kidogo anakuambia leo lafu they build on this so ataanza na kukuambia okay kuna kitu alisema ukifikia mwezi wa nane sijui yeah. kama bado uko hai utaangamia so if that is constantly pumped into your mind that is all you see that imani sasa inakuwa hivyo imani inakuwa hivyo so unaona ai tumefika tunaelekea mimi na bado Yesu wangu sijampata you know so things are going to go that way so it's just altering what is happening in your environment your focus zui hapo daktari wakili mm -hmm. eh, kuna wengi hawajui waseme haya ni mauaji 
huku ni kujitoa uhai ama namna gani maana kumshawishi paka kusikia sasa mili 40 imepatikana mm -hmm. uh, na kuna bili taarifa nyingine pengine tukiwa tutaipata tai ushahiwani wakati akikamatwa huyu bwana mm -hmm. akawa anasema kwamba yale mnajaribu kupigana nao hamu yatambui mm -hmm. yatawazidi nguvu mm -hmm. sasa ni kana kwamba ni mtu yuko tayari eh, kwa njia yoyote ile kuwashawishi wengi kuangamia sasa ndio tutataka tujue kisha kisheria hmm. haya inachukuliwa kama mauaji ama inachukuliwa tu ni mtu mwenye kwa hiari yake kujitoa wahi hasa tunapozungumzia watoto wadogo ambao ni rahisi kuwahimiza kufanya jambo ambalo si sawa uh, bado haja pelekwa mahakamani tujaona zile charges um, um, ambao atashtakiwa nayo lakini kuna ile element tunasema elements ya mada eh, kuna ile aspect ya intention unaona huyu was very deliberate vile alikuwa na shawishi yao unaona ile elements ya kujaribu ku conceal kuficha ficha vitu maana ni msitu eh, ambao eh, anaeka watu wake ameweka yeah. pale kwa zuia yes. kingine kuingia eh, alaf of course victims are identifiable eh? unajua wewe sema mimi nimeua bila kutambua yule nimeua kwa, kwa, kwa hivyo watu kama wewe sangu asena tayari anajua um, uh, a few people ambao wamekuwa converted alafu wakakawa influence um, alafu of course wamekufa so kuna elements lakini sijui kama atashtakiwa na mauaji e, muhimu ni kwamba niko na katiba yangu hapa uh, article 32 freedom of conscience religion belief and opinion muhimu ni kwamba kuna ile freedom ya religion in Kenya na tunafaa ku defend uh, tusitumie uh, example mbaya ya uh, makenzi ku intrude sana kwa mambo ya uh, mm. religion kanisa vitu kama hizo lakini uh, viongozi wa kanisa pia wanafaa kukubali kwamba uh, religion imetumika vibaya sana sana na wanasiasa hapa Kenya. Um, tumeona mara nyingi uh, kuna ile unholy alliance ya politics na <laughs> na, na kanisa. Uh, and Soviets huyu huyu Mackenzie could not operate without having the politicians around Malindi being in bed with him in one way or the other. Hata paka kufikia sasa kuna wananchi ambao wanashangaa hata viongozi wa siasa pale pale mwingi. MCA nini? Hawajajihusisha katika kuzungumzia masuala. Na ninawahakika kwamba wanasiasa wa Malindi pengine walienda kanisa yake kuomba kura wakatoa pesa vitu kama hizo um, so lazima tuende deep tujue kwamba huyu alitokea wapi juu kama anajulikana mimi mimi sijui mimi nimesoma mambo yake hapa lakini sijui lakini watu wengi kama wanamjua uh, tujue kwamba ana operate namna gani uh, kuanzia 2014 serikali iliacha ku, ku uh, register churches uh, kuna ile inaitwa moratorium kwa hivyo kuna kanisa mpya ambazo um, wamekuwa registered tangu 2014 lakini mimi mwenyewe nimekuwa na clients wamekuja um, wakaongea na makasisi wengine ambao tayari wako na barua alafu wamefungua bank accounts wamekuwa na branches so, so kasisi kama kama huyu rafiki yangu anaweza nipatia ruhusa nitumie jina yake nifungue kanisa au mabei ama kibraba kitu kama hicho inakuwa ni kanisa ya kanisa kabisa inachukua tithe nini whatever kwa hivyo kuna vitu vingi hapo vinaendelea around religion hapa Kenya um, uh, that requires serious conversation Uh, leo asubuhi nimesema kwamba pengine we need a new act of parliament just to regulate registration and management of churches including mambo ya funds ju um, uh, makasisi usema kwamba wameitwa na Mungu kutuombea ukweli ni kwamba wanafaa kulipwa wasemi wanataka wasemi wanataka kulipwa ukweli ni kwamba this is a job so you need to regulate wakuwe na boards kila kanisa iwe na board of trustees kama kasisi ameajiriwa tujue analipa pesa ngapi sio unajua juice umeona mwingine sijui siku hizi ameme america na uza some 600 or something acres so, so one of these prominent uh, pastors hapa Kenya sijui jina yake nani so you start asking okay a, a pastor wa kanisa alipataje ardhi uh, 800 million na hospitali na kitu kama hicho lazima kuwe na illicit sources of funds na kuna vile wanatumia pesa ambao lazima sasa tuanze ku regulate 
remember uh, ndio tuko na freedom of worship but remember religion pay me to make us sana particularly amongst the poor to manipulate yes and uh, uh, countries ambazo hawaja separate state na religion huwa wako na shida sana and Kenya has 60% plus poor people so they are very many vulnerable people ambao wana uh, kuwa influenced wafanye vitu baya hapa na pale and that is why most of us watu penye wamefika penye niko siku hizi we struggle to go to church because we don't want that manipulation no. and you can i can see through wakilizu hapo maana kipi ya baadaye nataka nikuulize maswala ya kisheria kuhusiana na iwapo atafikishwa mahakamani maana kitu tumeweza kuona umezungumzia ushahidi kuwepo pale lakini kuna baadhi wanamuogopa huyu kasisi na kuna baadhi hata wataki tu wapige picha wakati wa kuwa hoji kwa hivyo tutataka kujua iwapo hakutakuwa na ushahidi ambao unatolewa mahakamani kesi kama hii itakuwa obviously kuna ushahidi uh, sijui nani anamuogopa mimi simuogopi Uh, wakinita, kuna, wakinita wa kuna wake, kwa kuna wakinita ni baadhi ambao wamefuatwa na wanahabari lakini au ni watu tu wamekuwa influenced wachache nitakuja kwa kutueleza itakwenda Rosalina bado tunataka kusikia hisia hivi sasa umemwona ndugu huyo eh, na wifi yako eh, na sasa hivi nafikiri pengine hujui wamepelekwa maeneo gani kama walikamatwa na eh, wako sehemu gani je umejaribu kuwasiliana nao eh, na unasikia pengine kwa wengine ambao umeweza kuzungumza nao Uh, umesikia hisia gani kutoka uh, sehemu ya Malindi? Uh, simu simu ya my brother uh, to, me I tried calling aiku kwa inaenda through. So my aunt called and there is a person who picked it. Na akamwambia ametoka. Sasa akamuliza ametoka maen now the brother decided to go and find out ako wapi. Alituambia ako Malindi hospital. So I will also get down to Malindi Hospital to find out is she really there and what can she say about the children is there any place they can say watoto wako hai tulipeana mahali fulani that is our hope and our prayer but kama wanaweza kuwa wameaga will they be in a position to tell us waliaga tukazika mahali fulani i don't know that is now a puzzle that will be Uh, will be striked at that particular point. Yeah. Yes. Uh, lakini paka kufikia sasa wakati mpokuwa mkizungumza nao kwenda katika lile kanisa walikwenda kwa hiari. Hmm? Hakuna mtu aliyowalazimisha. Kwenda kwa lile kanisa walikwenda katika hiari. Lakini kama mke wa ndugu yangu alijaribu akasema kusema kweli ndugu yenu hii maneno ya hii kanisa imezidi. Amenikataza hata ID amechoma bad certificate za watoto amechoma ame wale walikuwa wanasoma vitabu zao zote ametupa kwa cho vitu zingine any document amechoma zote nitafanya namna gani hapo ndipo the family ya the wife walimuita wakamuongelesha wakamwambia kama imeshindikana toka ukuje kweli alikuja walituma hata transport akakuja but mapenzi ni nini the bro- my brother followed her akakuja akaomba msamaha wakamsikiza akamchukua akamrudisha after some time the wife was like bwanangu ako tu sawa maombi yako sawa kila kitu iko sawa yesu ako karibu kufanya nini kurudi aka tena akakosana na familia yake ikakuwa ni shida kila mtu hamjui sasa we really tried both families and the family mwenye mnasikia mtu yao ako pale either amekufa ama amepatikana ama ameshikwa these families honestly we tried We tried. Je, hofu yako ni kwamba mkiwasiliana sasa hivi hata mkiwa mtaonana ni kwa kwamba bado atakuwa na ile itikadi kali na kwa hivyo itachukua muda sana yeye kuelewa kwa nini mnajaribu kumuondoa katika lile dhehebu kumrudisha katika hali sawa. Unahisi kwamba bado kutakuwa na ule mtafaru. In katika. fact that is my biggest fear. My fear ni unajua hatujui could there be something walipewa? Could there be something we don't know? kwenda kumchukua pale na ni mtu ashakuwa tuned to understand that this is the right way nikifika mbele yake hata sijui atanikaribisha aje sijui ataniona kama muasi ama atanitambua kama dada yake na aanze kunisikiza because for me when i go my plan is to go and just like okay how are you nimefika pole kwa yaliyo kupata I don't know the response. I don't know what to expect. But I have to go. This is my blood. 
I don't know where the children are. When I will pose the question, where are the children? I don't know what to expect. I have that fear. I don't know. I need support. Rosalina Zui hapo, tarejia kwa kumana kipia daktari yuko hapa. Atueleze kisaikolojia, siyo tukwa wale ambao wa meathrika, bali hata ambao ni jamaa kama yeye. E, kitu gani ambacho waneza kufanya? Na hivu tunafuzungumza, kuna maiti tatu zaidi zimeweza kufukuliwa. E, Mwanabari wetu Francis Mtalaki ni mwenye kutupasha hizo wabari, ya takuwa natuarifu zaidi kutoka ene ulile la malindi, kwa hivu maiti tatu zaidi zimepatikana. Idadi sasa, kama siku kosea ni 43, watu waleweza kuangamia kutoka kanisa hili la Good News International linaloongozwa na Paul Mackenzie. Sondoke hapo ulipo tunarejea hivi punde na mazungumzo zaidi pamoja na hisia kutoka maeneo tofauti hapa nchini.